The first thing, study leadership. Because sales management is a leadership role. It's not a management role. It, it is about leading other people. The second thing is um, build a culture of accountability. And if I, if I were to pick on sales managers for the one area where they're absolutely the weakest, it's holding people accountable to goals, to outcomes, and for be, being who they need to be in front of the customer. That has to change. So I would start with leadership and accountability. And then I would add one, and I'm going to steal Mike's thunder on this one. You, you've got to be much more directive about where and how salespeople spend time. And sales managers refuse to do this. I don't want to be a micromanager. I don't want to be a nudge. I don't want to be a nag. I don't want to be somebody's mama, whatever, whatever they want to say. It doesn't matter. They're not doing the work that they have to do because you're giving them too much freedom. Sales is a role that it has massive amount of independence and freedom. And so you need a massive amount of discipline and accountability to keep people within the line. So they do what's in their best interest, the company's best interest, and the client's best interest. We were working with a company that the CEO and the CFO called us in because their, their new sales, new customers had been dipping. Um, and their salespeople were spending more and more of their time managing existing accounts. And we went in, spent a week with them, kind of got an understanding of what was going on, and we made one change. And we taught them a few things, but we shifted them from doing their call blocks whenever they wanted to for prospecting new customers to doing it first thing in the morning. So when they walk through the door, no email, no cat videos, prospect. And within about 15 days, they started selling more. Within 60 days, the, the numbers were going up significantly. We shook everybody's hand, so this is great, and we walked away. We get the same call three months later new sales have dipped again. Went back in and took a look at it, set with the sales group and the sales manager and the salespeople explained to us that prospecting in the afternoon was just better. They were talking to more people, it was working out for them, it was just better. And they had allowed the prospecting block to shift later and later and later in the day. And you and I know both what was happening, no prospecting was happening at all. And the sales manager gladly allowed that to happen because the sales manager was unwilling to be Teflon. This is my number one. You have to be Teflon if you're a sales manager. Teflon. You have to be able to say to your people with a smile on your face, it's eight o'clock in the morning, get on the phone. This is what we're gonna do. And you can you can watch cat videos all you want to, but not between eight o'clock and nine o'clock, because that's what we're doing. So number one is Teflon. Number two is, is a, as a sales leader, you have to get, be in the trenches with your salespeople, sitting side by side. I go to inside sales organizations where the sales leaders are there on the other side of the building watching a monitor. I walk into field sales organizations where the sales manager in the middle of the day is checking off expense reports. Your job is to be with your salespeople side by side with them all the time. And if you're not with them, you're not doing your job. All the other stuff, do it on your own time. And the third thing uh, for, for sales leaders is, and this is what I know about consistently successful sales leaders, the ones that are not one hit wonders, like day in and day out, they're, they're year in, year out, they're hitting it. And that is, they know their people. They have a, a, an intimate knowledge of the things that their people want. Napoleon Hill said that everything begins with a desire. Those sales leaders understand that sales is hard. It's tough. It's not easy. Um, and even the best salespeople need someone to get their arms around them to help them get over those humps, making that one more call, doing what they have to do, dealing with losing a deal. And if you're a sales leader and you know your people, and you hear this from the salespeople who talk about these great sales leaders, this guy knows me, or this, this, you know, she knows me, she understands me. You know them, you understand what their goals are, and you are spending a lot of your time shifting and focusing their mindset on desire, on the things that they want, so that you can help them do the really hard things that they have to pay for in advance of getting sales success. Good. I think one of the biggest tips we can give sales leaders is to stop with, and you use this phrase a couple times, a one size fits all. I got a lot of clients that I'm walking into that have a one size fits all sales role. It's this hybrid, tribrid, quadbrid. I mean, they got one guy that does everything. And there's a reality that some of us are wired like hunters and we like to go kill stuff and we're okay with conflict. And some of us are wired like zookeepers and we're really good at nurturing and loving and cleaning up after stuff. And I, I cannot tell you how many organizations that are staffed with 80% zookeepers and they think that those people are gonna go hunting in their spare time. And it never happens because they're nurturers, they're not hunters. And at the same time, we have hunters, very few precious 
you know, few number of hunters. And those people get tasked with doing all the admin, account maintenance. They go kill big game. They got to drag the thing back to the office. They got to butcher it, spice it, cook it, serve it, do the dishes. And they end up spending 20% of their time hunting instead of maybe 80% when there's all these other people that could do that other piece of the puzzle. So I think a, a harder look at sales roles would be really helpful. This other one I want to talk about is we, we, we start early with high value activities or you call them RPA. Love that, revenue producing activities. I do an exercise when I, when I lead workshop, workshops trying to get the salespeople to articulate what are their three highest value activities that they should be time blocking. It's amazing how misaligned the salespeople are with how they view their highest value activities with how the managers, you want, you want a sales management tip? Every sales manager should get with every rep and have them articulate what they think their three or four highest value activities are and those better be in alignment with the sales manager thinks they are and if not, they better negotiate those out because all we got is time and it's mostly getting wasted. I'll, get, I'll, I'll add a third one, and uh, where you guys already went down this path. It's the one-on-one -on -one meeting. And I'm, uh, it, accountability, and it, I ask sales managers all the time, how much time are you spending one-on-one -on -one with your people? And they always give me this nebulous answer back, well, I talk to everybody every day. Okay, let me ask you that question differently. How often do you sit down one-on-one -on -one or over the phone or Skype with your, with your folks to review the results? So they have to face the music to dive into their pipeline and see if what's in there is, is healthy and gonna help you make this month and this quarter's numbers. And then if the results aren't good and the pipeline's not good, then I, I hold off a little bit of activity more than these guys. Then I'm crawling up their butt. Show me your calendar. How many calls did you make? Who did you see? What does your calendar look like for the next 30 days? Because if your numbers ain't there and your pipeline's weak, I have nothing left to ask you but go, how are you spending your time? And I'm telling you, if managers would do those three things, oh my gosh. It's the sales culture. Culture starts at the top. Sales leaders are, sales managers are quick to blame everything else. No, culture starts at the top and it starts with you. And this is why these guys have heard me say this a lot, but sales is leadership, leadership is sales. If you want your salespeople to be seen as leaders out there, you have to be seen as a leader to your salespeople. And number two on that, is really where are you spending your time? I see too many sales managers managing the bottom of the funnel. They're managing the close. My, and these guys have picked up on, it's managing the top of the funnel. Do I have a prospecting oriented organization? Am I, at, am I looking for the prospecting? When, when I ask sales managers, I love to ask sales managers, when do you go out on sales calls? And I love to hear this comment, I hate it, but I hear it. Well, I go out to close the deals. Why are you having to go out to close the deals? Your role as a sales leader is to go out there and open the deals because you can have conversations that your salespeople can have. You can ask questions that your salespeople. You have to be, so you've got to be sitting there asking your salespeople what, how are, challenging every aspect of the prospecting process. If we put the right items into the top of the funnel, we'll get the sales coming out at the bottom. But you know what that means? It means you have to be willing to do it yourself. And this means really demonstrating sales from a level of integrity, demonstrating sales from a level of leadership that says you understand them both professionally and personally. When I understand you personally, I can coach you professionally. When I understand you professionally, I'm gonna be able to help you personally. Too many sales, oh no, we can't do, oh no, 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 believe me. It's all the same because sales, you wrote it in your book so eloquently. Sales is an attitude game. It is an attitude. The accountant can have a bad attitude. The numbers are still going to come out the same. But it's amazing. Salesperson has a bad attitude. It falls apart. So what does my whole job come down to? I want to create an environment for my people to succeed. Hmm. Measurement of success is not what I do. Measurement of success is what my people do. Use technology as a tool, but understand technology is, and I, I, is statistical analysis. Technology is nothing more than averages. There are always exceptions to everything. And what I'll find is every, t every conversation is an outlier conversation. Every meeting is an outlier conversation. I have the greatest ability. This is why two people can have the exact same calling list. Jeb, you see this all the time in your boot camps. Two people can have the exact same calling list. One person has incredible level of success. One person can't complete a call. Why? Because it comes down to the attitude. And are you allowing technology to drive your attitude or using technology to help you create a better attitude. That's really what it comes down. I'm gonna use technology, I'm gonna use tools, 
but it's going to help me be more effective and more efficient because at the end of the day, the most valuable asset I have is my time. I'm going to kiss you. Technology. <laughs> I was going for it.